Hi, everybody. We are here this week on the Cosmic Leadership Podcast with Niraj Naik. He is an incredible human being, and I have been introduced to his work very recently by a friend of mine who does breathwork practice, and he is the go-to person for this. So Niraj is an ex-pharmacist turned holistic health expert, founder of the International School of Breathwork, Soma Breath. He started his path in healing others as a community pharmacist, yet after several years, he found himself a patient of stress-related depression and ulcerative colitis. This was a wake-up call that made him embark on a journey of profound self-healing and education. Known internationally as the renegade pharmacist, how cool is that? Niraj is dedicated to educating others on topics of holistic health, breathwork, meditation, and more. In addition to his website and blog, therenegadepharmacist.com, he's created many other brands related to health and healing and was featured in articles from multiple news outlets across the world, such as Forbes, Daily Mail, Business Insider, and Huffington Post. Welcome, Niraj. Great to be here. Thank you so much for being with us. So on this podcast, we have a really beautiful audience of spiritual seekers, healers, cosmic leaders of all kinds. And so one of my favorite questions to ask at the beginning is how did you get started in all of this? I know you had these diagnoses happening and you were trying to figure things out. Can you tell us the story? Yes, certainly. So um, it all began pretty much uh, going through a bit of a crisis with job dissatisfaction, disillusionment, working as a pharmacist for like seven years. Tried many different ways to get out of that job, you know, lots of business ideas that didn't go anywhere. Um, and then ended up like actually figuring out how to get people off the medications. So I started to write these um, healthy shopping lists for patients based on their conditions. And I got really good at getting people off um, meds uh, who were suffering from chronic issues like diabetes, high blood pressure, stuff like that. And That actually got me um, kind of asked to leave my first job because I was uh, called, I was supposedly mismanaging the pharmacy and I was was actually not selling many of the pharmacy uh, over the counter products because I was telling people how to make their own cough mixture out of, I was just saying, look, read the ingredients on on the packet of something like Benelin. It's basically sugar, um, alcohol, and some kind of, a thing that makes you sedated, yeah. like antihistamine or something. And literally you can just make your own. It's a hot toddy, mm-hmm. a little bit of brandy, <laughs> bit of honey and fresh lemon does the same trick. It's better actually, it's more healthy. Yeah. So I, I actually got really good at getting people to do all the old wives tales, you know, all the old grandma's remedies, yeah. which actually work better than a lot of the stuff over the counter. You know, most of those over the counter stuff is just based on you know, things that people have used traditionally, they just made artificial versions of it. Mm -hmm. And so I got really good results with that. And then I got, um, eventually I got promoted to the head office of one of the biggest corporations in the UK, Mm -hmm. uh, which is a supermarket and a a pharmacy in one place. Okay. And I came up with this healthy shopping lift service, um, which was going to work on their, their website. And unfortunately, six months into it, they decided to scrap it and the whole thing got really watered down it wasn't what i originally intended it's way too controversial i think yeah so i ended up then getting even more disillusioned in my career and got a a chronic illness called ulcerative colitis an autoimmune disease and i was like literally shitting blood 40 times a day i was like super super sick like lost a third of my body weight it was horrendous And, and the doctor told me you've got two choices yeah. Be a guinea pig for a drug that hasn't been tested before or uh, have your colon removed, right? Uh, that was it. And I wasn't down for any of that. Yeah. Luckily, that they say God stands for gift of desperation, but in that most desperate moment, I got a gift, which was a dear friend of our family, Swami Amikananda, who, ba- who said to me, if you can heal yourself from this, if you can reverse this, you'd be an amazing role model to other people. And boom, um, she taught me the foundations of pranayama, traditional yoga, um, Ayurveda. I tried a few basic things and then went down the rabbit hole. And within a few months, I was fully recovered. Um, And I went back into my love for music. That was the big thing, actually, I'd say, that changed everything. Was What lit me up was 
going back into producing music again. And I started to um, put music to transformational techniques and experiences. Mm -hmm. And that actually um, led to my first business, actually. It was a music therapy business. I created this special type of brainwave music called Tripnoral. And end up like being used by a lot of therapists and health spas around the world. And then I um, started going around the world training. And what I was doing was I was putting breathing practices to um, music. Yes. This, this was the original business I did. And if you breathe in certain rhythms and patterns, you can like switch off stress very easily. And music's a great way to time the breath to the beat. Mm -hmm. So that got really popular. I even actually like met um, this guy called Wim Hof. You probably heard of him. Yeah. Produced of all the music for Wim Hof Method. Yeah. Lots of collaborations with him. Um, and I, I trained with some amazing yogis um, up near the Himalayas. There's a doctor who has a he's a yogi, but does a lot of transformational stuff with his patients using just traditional yoga techniques. And he's done a lot of research on the science of yoga. So I trained a lot in that, studied that, went really deep into that. Yeah. Realized why these techniques work and, and made a pact that I'm going to put science and make these techniques more accessible. And yeah. so that, that became then the origin of Soma Breath, what we've got today, which has now trained almost 2,000 instructors around the world. We do lots of retreats, we have many courses, we're even being studied by Cambridge Uni. Like actually, my mum always said, like, study really hard, yeah. and then one day you can go to Cambridge University or Oxford. <laughs> but ironically, I didn't ever go to Cambridge or Oxford, but they're studying us, which is yeah. even better. So yeah, so things have just been manifesting, like, really, like, once we found, I found that, that, that pivot, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the techniques that really make the change a difference, yeah. that are very easy to do. Actually, yeah. it's so simple. Like, there's too much mysticism and 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 then all this these old ancient practices needed to be de dogmified, you know. Agreed. De mystified, yes. and that's what I have put my whole heart and soul into doing. Me um, too. Yeah. I'm a former yeah. scientist. Also, yeah. I got my start in neuroscience. Yeah. And then I introduced my own nice. spiritual modalities in relation to the neuroscience. And I'm so excited that the University of Cambridge is studying your work because I think the more we can get science backing for the things that we do, the more we will start to turn around this broken, broken medical system that says to a man who's, you yes. know, in the depths that you have to try a new medication that no one's ever tried or just live that way. Um, I, know. I went through I know. my own because it's, it's the business model. It is. It's a, it's yeah. a business. It's a business model. It's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. the you know selling pills so i don't know if that paradigm will ever die away completely because it makes way too much money i know too many people are rich uh, but what we have what we can do is uh educate the people through science mm -hmm. to show them there's another way so at least those who don't want because remember the pills are serving a type of person as well who wants quick fix he doesn't want to do it but real results, real change, real transformation requires a bit of effort, a little bit of self-care, yeah. a little bit of discipline. Yeah. And the world actually rewards people who, who have a little bit of discipline, self-care, and look after themselves. And, and just do, you only need to do a little bit every day, yeah. right? To become really good at something. If you want to be really good at something, do a little bit every day. That's all you got to do. But a lot of people don't want to do that. That's the un unfortunate truth is that we live in a world where people give up all their power to somebody else. I agree. And that paradigm needs to shift that I'm trying to work really hard on breaking that paradigm, like changing that where it's like, no, you have to be personally responsible. Mm -hmm. You have to take your own responsibility. You have yeah. to like yourself enough to actually want to work on yourself. And that requires yeah. actually hope. And mm -hmm. right now the world Actually, it, if you look at it from some points of view, you know, it's the hope's gone. Who do, you, who do you look up to now? Who's, your, who's the leaders inspire you? you know, is it the president of America or the prime minister of Great Britain who just resigned? Yeah. It's, not, it's definitely not them. They're not the role models. So 
Right. Who do you look up to? You know, and that's what we need to shift is the the trust. We have to give the trust back to people, and right. and then people will become more motivated to look after themselves. I think. I think so too. And I think a large part of that is that deconditioning of that idea that there is someone outside of us that knows us better than we know ourselves. Exactly. No one will know what you need like you know what you need. And you may not be a doctor, you may not be an herbalist or know the things that you're supposed to do. But when something doesn't feel right, that's your inner knowing, that's knowing yourself. And so you have to act from yeah. that place rather than giving over power to somebody who yeah. doesn't really know. They may have the science, and also so many people, they don't know you. Yeah, yeah. But also so many people rely now on these gadgets, right, to tell them how they feel, right? Mm -hmm. Like feedback devices and um, rings that, that tell you your metrics first thing in the morning that freak you out, right? right. And then give you high <laughs> blood pressure from the morning, right? right? So actually we have the best biofeedback already. The it's benefits. our own intuition yeah. our body our physiology it's like telling us things all the time mm -hmm. but we need a, a ring on our finger to tell us that we've got this or that wrong with us actually your body's telling us all the time we just forget about that yeah. so that's a big part of what we're doing as well is helping people to get back into their own feeling the intuition mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so in the breathwork course that i took with you it was breathwork accompanied by music and so can you talk yes. to us a little bit about the the musical part of things? Like how did you become interested in putting music to breath work? And how does that change well, I'm, I'm a, the game? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm a music producer like from, that was my childhood passion. Yeah. And I actually used to run like raves when I was 19. That was my okay. first business. <laughs> I never thought I'd ever be a pharmacist. Like I did that as a degree, but my big passion was music events and Okay. DJs and dancing and, and that, that kind of stuff. So, but that that didn't work out in the end, and um, you know there was a lot of bad luck that happened, and um, and I ended up in as a pharmacist, which actually was the best thing that ever happened. It was a blessing in disguise, even though it was hell for seven years. It was a blessing, but when I went back to um, when I started to look to ways to heal myself. Um, I started to listen to a lot of therapeutic music on, on YouTube, meditation okay. music, brain entertainment music. Yep. And I found a new love for music. I was like, cause before I was into really like hard dance, like drum and bass, like heavy stuff. And, but this was a whole different style of music, which I didn't really ever knew existed. Okay. And that, and that, it gave me so much like relaxation, right. Yeah. And turned off the stress so well. Yeah that I was like, okay, I want to start making stuff like this. So I got really into doing that. But then I realized, so in pranayama, a lot of the breathing patterns mm -hmm. are rhythmic. So you're breathing in a rhythm. Yeah. And that has different effects, like doubling your exhale time versus your inhale time, yeah. different speeds. Very science backed. Yes. Yeah. So I was like, right, well, music is the best timer of your breath, right? Yeah. Because one of the problems with if you count in your mind, like in pranayama, you count seconds. Yeah. So some people use beads, mm -hmm. right? Mala, that's why you have mala beads, because they're to count. Yes. Um, okay, but, um, or if you count in your head, the problem with that is it creates an unconscious stutter mm -hmm. to your breathing, and your breathing needs to be smooth for the effect. So if you're counting, if you go in, two, three, four, every time you say in, two, in your mind, your yeah. breath, because your breathing and your thoughts are so intimately linked, it creates a bit of a jerkiness to your breath, mm -hmm. which is counterproductive. So but with the music, you can just follow along with the groove of the music. The counting is already embedded you know, yeah. into the music. And okay. that makes it like more meditative. And you can really make your breath smooth. The smoother okay. your breathing is, the more rhythmic and precise it is. Because also with counting, it's not going to be per perfect rhythm. Mm -hmm. But with music, you can time it to a beat, and that changed everything. So, in yeah. terms of it's also like music, also has this soothing effect. It also lights up both hemispheres of the brain. It has an amazing dynamic mm -hmm. effect on on activating the brain. So, when you combine that with breath, yeah, it's like a full magic experience. Yeah. Agreed. And that is very yeah. neuroscientifically backed. Um, just yes. some of the things you were saying that 
in order for you to fully heal, you need to be using both sides of your brain. You can heal one side entirely, as Jill Bolte Taylor has proven. She's this incredible woman um, who's rehabilitated her brain. But it works faster and much better if you can work with both sides of the brain at the same time. And so the, the musical aspect would engage both sides of the brain as you're doing the breathing. Plus, the other neuroscience-backed thing that you brought up is the, the longer exhale thing that actually yes. stimulates your immune system in a different way. And so um, I don't know if you're familiar with all of the, the Kundalini yoga chants, but that was kind of my entry point into breath work was that mm. practice. And mm. the long echo on cars, it was a, a chant where you're exhaling for like nine or 10 seconds at a time. And people yeah. have found that to be incredibly healing also. Yes. So yeah, we make rhythmic uh, tracks that follow yeah. those patterns as well. So we have a variety of different ones for different uses yeah it really is a pharmacy like pranayama is a pharmacy of techniques it is. so there's there's different styles for different uses yeah i loved that Great. class that was incredible and you offer um tell tell us about your free breathwork classes because that was my my entry point into your work do you do them often i can't remember how i i think i found yours on instagram actually yeah we have loads of uh, free content we have a on YouTube, we have a whole channel with many different like samples of what we do. Yeah. But we also have a free masterclass, like on um, uh, you know, through you, they can. Yes. The listeners can get the links and check it out. But yes. in there, I really go and break down the science, how everything works, because um, you need to know why this stuff works. So we can go much deeper in a in like a masterclass, and you can experience it as well. But. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, so we we give a lot of value like up front, you know, so, so you can test it out. The best is actually just to actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Because until you actually do it, you don't really know if it's going to work for you or not. You're like, well, it's just another breathwork practice, you know, there are so many. But then once you try it, you're like, Oh, that was incredible. So yeah, I highly recommend sense. people go check that out. And then beyond that, you're also doing a breathwork training now also. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we love to train instructors. We like to empower people mm -hmm. to teach other people, like to pass it on, right? And yeah. to create some abundance to it too. So um, we train instructors in um, very, very, it's like a, I would say a PhD of breath work, traditional yogic science. Yeah. And we really break it down, lots of evidence to support everything we're talking about, into um well first we have a routine mm -hmm. which people love it's like a something you can do as a group practice you can do it um one-on-one -on -one with your clients and we have lots of yoga teachers and yeah. even like massage therapists reiki muscles lots of and people just everyday people as well yeah who use this to actually get people together and and like kind of create an intention and celebrate you know mm -hmm. life together or, or create some experience you know together but the idea is that actually by doing it, it not only is it good for your you know, mental health, but it's amazing yeah. for physical health as well, the whole breathing techniques. And then we show people how to then actually go even deeper and retrain people's breath because we were never given a manual on how to breathe correctly, right? And True. The breath is really like the remote control of the mind, body, and spirit. That's what, what we call yeah. it. Because once you understand the breath, you can tap into the autonomic nervous system. Mm -hmm. And breathing is so important as well, because actually oxygen is something that we can't live without, but also we can't live with. Yeah. Oxygen creates oxidative stress. It actually causes like combustion inside our, it's like a combustion engine going on, our mitochondria. And with that comes wear and tear. Mm -hmm. That's why we need antioxidants in our diet because it prevents a lot of the oxidative stress problems. So that's why antioxidants have an anti aging effect. But yeah. the most profound and potent antioxidant of all is nitric oxide, which you only produce through ni nasal breathing and also humming. Mm -hmm. But we create techniques and breath holding, we create techniques that really stimulate the most potent antioxidant of all, which is also antiviral, antibacterial, also wakes up your. Uh, blood vessels keeps your blood pressure in balance 
even activate stem cells in different ways. So we, we create these techniques and show you how to use this inner pharmacy we all have, mm -hmm. but also become so efficient at using oxygen that actually your breathing rate slows down yeah. and your breath hold times improve. And there's yeah. a direct correlation, right, with an explanation through mechanism of why slower breathing, people who breathe slower, mm -hmm. like, and have longer breath hold times, live longer and yeah. have less disease. And yeah. uh, so we show people exactly the science and how to coach people to retrain their breathing so that they become super efficient using oxygen. And so if anyone's suffering from a symptom of disease, even brain fog, um, lack of energy, feeling fatigued, which are so many people are feeling right now, mm -hmm. by retraining the breathing using simple techniques and having a daily practice which you look forward to, you can get super efficient using oxygen. Yeah. And then you literally turn back the clock on aging. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That all sounds so great. And I love that you're teaching other people how to learn how to do this for themselves so they can teach people too. That's a great multiplier effect. I'm so That's happy. it, yeah. Yeah, like they're not going to teach this stuff in med school. They're not going to teach this <laughs> stuff in pharmacy school. Someone's going to have to do it, right? Yeah. Someone has to do it. So the more like amazing breathwork instructors we have, the better the world's going to get, in my opinion. <laughs> Agreed. I agree. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank and you don't have to go and study for seven years, right? You know, and, and go two hundred and fifty grand into debt, um, or some. I think some places like a million dollars before you become a doctor. Yeah, like, and then you still aren't really helping people that off quite often. Yeah, like, making them worse sometimes. So, so I think the more people we have who are trained in holistic health and breathing retraining and becoming efficient using oxygen and. and all the other amazing stuff that you can do with the breath, you know, getting into altered states, improving mental health, yeah. psychotherapeutically as well. More people have doing that, the better the world's going to become. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Niraj. We'll drop the links below yeah. for how people can sign up for those things. Um, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you for being here.